where prior to that, I, I didn't really have a lot. Um, and I was a single mom, so I was always like really struggling. So when I went to this app and a dating class, I was really excited because I saw this opportunity for others to kind of fast forward to get to where I was. Just a little bit of help, right, can go a really long way. And so I just had this like big desire and passion to really like give back in like the community. But this power platform could lower the barrier of entry for anyone that wanted to kind of change their lives. So on the plane ride home from this app in a day course, I was so excited about what could be done. I had to like give this excitement um, a name and it ended up being World Max, right? And so my goal with this, like I'm on a mission. My mission is to help empower as many people as possible with the power platform. Hi everyone, in today's episode, we have Mary Myers from Walmax. She's a CEO and an MVP in Power Platform community. But more than that, there is an inspiring story behind her success so far in her amazing career, but also what she's looking forward to helping the community. As she does lots of uh, uh, public service, helping women shelters and other things as well. Please listen her story and get inspired. So thank you, Mary, for joining the podcast. So, uh, Hi, Mary. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And today, I just want to learn from you more about uh, your journey. And and we met a few days ago to just get an idea. But I was very inspired. You have a journey where we have positivity coming from your personal life into the business life. So can we give a brief intro about what you're doing now uh, and your journey in D365 space, Power Platform? Sure, no problem. So first of all, like um, you said, my name's Mary Myers, and I like to think of myself as the chief maximizer at World Max, which is um, a power platform company that I started two years ago. However, to your point, right, the journey, the journey started a long time ago, and I didn't actually know where I was going to end up um, because I've actually only been in the tech industry for like five years. And prior to that, I was an end user. I was working in a couple different, you know, spaces um, and working through school and ran a couple different um, companies prior to getting into the tech industry. So then whenever I had the opportunity to get into tech, it just kind of made sense to take my experiences and be able to automate them and put them all together. It's kind of the the short story, I guess, of how I uh, pulled everything together. No, that's great. And just a bit about your company, too. I, th- I know you call Walmax. I like the WM logo. But you also speak about women empowerment and other things that you really aspire with your company. So can we get a brief about what you're doing with the company and your goals with your company? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. It's funny because what's... Again, what started off wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Several years ago, when I first got into the tech industry, like I actually had no clue what I was doing. And so I was like jumping into like different user groups and I found out about this thing called App in a Day. And so I went to this App in a Day course and it opened my eyes up to like the most amazing ability and things that, you know, we could now do to transform business processes. And what I saw, one of the things is, is whenever I got into the tech industry, like I doubled my income that day because um, being in the tech industry gave me a lot more opportunities where prior to that, I I didn't really have a lot um, and I was a single mom. So it was always like really struggling. So when I went to this app and a day class, I was really excited because I saw this opportunity for others to kind of fast forward to get to where I was. It took me um, 11 years and seven different colleges before I finally graduated with my degree, which was really, really hard, right? It took me a long time to get to, to even be in the tech industry. So I was so excited that this power platform could lower the barrier of entry for anyone that wanted to kind of change their lives. So 
on the plane ride home from this app in a day course, I was so excited about what could be done. I had to like give this excitement um, a name and it ended up being World Max, right? And so my goal with us, like I'm on a mission. My mission is to help empower as many people as possible with the power platform. And that's kind of how I came up with the name. And so I started um, just working with trying to teach as many people after I learned the power platform. And I wanted to like create solutions and teach people and and kind of mentor along the way um, and, and just try to share it with as many people as possible. As a result, um, people will come up to me and they like, well, could you build this for me? Or could you do this for me? You know, and how much do you charge? And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. For, like, that's not my real job. Like, that's just what I do for fun. Um, but my friends encouraged me, and you know, what started off as a side business is now a now a full time business. But yeah, it just came from you know an exciting user group meeting, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I was just reading through the the about section of your chief maximizer, right? I like that name. I think sometimes people have to be, uh, it's it's very catchy too, maximizer. You can maximize the business opportunity. I think that's what Power Platform is in a way. It helps you to maximize your potential. So uh, that's a great name. And the other thing I was going was your primary focus was to like uh, help the digitally digitally upskill the single moms, youth, and others. I think that's yeah. a good mission statement. A lot of people have it, but sometimes what happens is it came as a corporate initiative, but looks like this came from your personal as well. So can you expand more on what you're doing on that front? I know you do a lot of teachings and helping other people. Yeah, you know, for me, I think it's easiest for us to like connect and help people that like we most resonate with, right? And so as I was putting myself through school as a single mom and working full time, like it was just so difficult. So for me, I always try to help make that journey for other people maybe a little less difficult, right? Because unless you've been in their shoes, you don't know how much just a little bit of help, right, can go a really long way. And so I just had this like big desire and passion to really like give back in like the community. Um, and this is actually a couple of years ago, back in 2020 when COVID happened, or right, right kind of at that same time, um, I had stopped by and I worked, I was actually working with this women's shelter that was like local in my area. I, I knew that they needed, I don't know, I honestly, I just stopped there on a whim and I was like, do you, like, I'd like to work with you guys and like set up a tech center. So what we ended up doing is um, we ended up fundraising within the community, um, within the tech community and my local community to get computers and funds to put a tech center within this women's shelter. Um, And these women were able to live there like long term and their kids live there as well. So it was really great. Well, not really great, but like whenever the kids couldn't go back to school during COVID, they could, and everyone had to go to school online. Typically, or previously, these kids would have been, you know what I mean, at a huge disadvantage. They either have to go somewhere to find computers, which isn't easy. So more likely, they would get behind on schoolwork, right? Yeah. So, um, but then they were able to have like all the computers there, so the kids were able to keep up with their schoolwork. And then, you know, honestly, my first goal was like, I'm going to make all these, you know, individuals, I'm going to teach them all the power platform. But what you learn when you work on opportunities like this is like life just doesn't go as you plan, right? And you just need to meet people exactly like where they're at and just kind of mold or blend into a little bit of what what they need, right? It's less about what you want and more about what they need. So we helped them at least have computer access. And so people have gone on to get like their paralegal certifications and some real estate licenses. And honestly, one of the biggest things for these ladies as well is it gave them online access to easily keep up with like their benefits, right? So they could keep their health insurance, so they could keep like that daycare money, so they could keep going to work and like those types of things. So they could really truly get on their feet and have access to like that as well. So we did that, and then that actually went so well that we opened up a second one because we couldn't put um, – when when it's like a women's shelter, there's some safety concerns involved, right? You can't just have, like, random people, like, on the streets coming into that. 
So we actually opened up a second one that allowed um, for just anyone to kind of come in and be able to, you know what I mean, get, get again, access to technology and stuff. So, you know, I've worked with different things like that. And then I work with some nonprofits online where we work, we teach um, individuals like different components of the power platform, right? Where we give them those skill sets and those knowledge and, and like soft skills and things like that. And then work to help them network within the community so that they can, you know, get new jobs as well. So I don't know. For me, it's just what excites mm-hmm. me and what makes me feel whole. Yeah, yeah. No, it seems like it's natural to you as well. And a lot of people don't realize the hard work does not, it's not about teaching power apps. It's more about understanding all the logistics, right? That's where people kind of give up. And that's where I have a lot of admiration for people like you and others who actually go through those hurdles to actually do the teaching, right? Uh, and yeah. the other thing also I learned is I've not done much like you, but I also know it's a, you also touched a point about meeting where they are. Sometimes as where we are, where we stand because of our fortune or luck, right? We can understand like, hey, you have your great potential. You could be here easily, but for them right. to realize that it's hard. And in those cases is where we need mentors, and people who can inspire others. And that's why I was thinking to talk to you as well, because I think people have to listen and uh, understand. I will touch base on this other aspect as well. You were not from tech, you recently got to tech, right? So Mm -hmm. uh, if someone is new and who's listening here, right, I would like them to also understand the entry barrier entry has been not so high for a long time inside tech. You need to have computer science, engineering, this and that. But now that has been slowly going away because you don't need to know the code actually. Uh, You can do low code stuff. Uh, But can you explain more on how anyone new who wants to enter tech, what are the guidelines you have? Uh, Because I think I'm pretty sure people will reach out, if not now in three months or whenever they find you, right? So, Yeah. So, you know, I get asked various components of this question all the time, right? So if if you're new into tech, where should you start? Well, I'm super biased, so I'm going to say the power platform. So let's just assume that, you know, when we say new to tech, we'll say that you are new in your power platform journey, okay? Because that's the only place that I would tell you to go first off. So yeah. <laughs> once you're in your power platform journey, you know, a couple of things I would recommend, you know, right off the bat would be to, like, just dive into community, Um, get on socials and follow people that are, you know, working in the power platform. And also with that, you know, it's kind of picking back for a second, like with with that, when you're working in the power platform, don't think that you have to be an expert on all of it. Like if you're super hyper obsessed with one part, great. You can be an expert in just that part. Like nobody's really brilliant at everything. Like they may say it, but ask ask them some hard questions and I bet you that you'll find out differently, right? So don't think that you have to be everything in the power platform. Like just find a space that you really resonate with. And then, like I said, kind of surround your, your network and your socials around that. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't look at other parts, but I'm just saying whenever you got a lot coming at you. Also, like don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I ask for help all the time. Um, and to me, I think one, that's how I was able to build some of a personal brand for myself, right? Like you just have to put yourself out there and be vulnerable so that people know like who you are. I guess maybe, maybe vulnerable and authentic are different, but similar words. So maybe it's more about being like authentic, right? Like if you don't know something, don't pretend like you know it, like ask a question. Because if you have a question, like other people are going to have the same question. So ask it instead of just sitting there like not doing anything, right? Um, Additionally, I would say like put content out, whether or not you have, you know, aspirations to be a large content producer, big name or not, because it's just like the things that we learn in school, right? Like, if you go and you're you're taking your notes during class, right? Like I was a nerd, so I would go home and I would go and I would rewrite all my notes, right? That I learned in class anyway, just to really cement that in my brain, right? So if you're producing content, what that's doing is that's really solidifying what you know, um, first and foremost, right? Like if you can teach, if you can explain it, then you really understand like what you're doing. Um, 
And two, everyone needs to feel like that piece of content, right? Like it's going to resonate with like other people. And again, it's going to build you your community and your community is important because nobody knows everything. And whenever you run into a problem, go to your buddy over here. That's an expert. So I don't know. There's, I think I think kind of just to bring it on home with your when you're getting started with the power platform is just practice and be pers- you know what I mean persevere like because you're gonna run into problems you're gonna have questions you're gonna hit a bunch of red you know check boxes that make you want to go crazy but that's what your community's for that's where you're gonna go ask for help that's where you're gonna go look for content right and it just kind of keeps circling back okay. and around so. No, I agree with you. I think I would say, like you mentioned, vulnerability on and authenticity, right? I think the key, other key thing, similar word is something like honesty. If you're honest with people and tell them, hey, I am learning new, I'm a newcomer, I would like to learn, I would like to grow, people actually see that as a positive thing and would help you more than you think. People will spend hours with you teaching stuff if they have to. Like even for me, I remember when I'm an expert now or I would call myself expert now, but I know for sure I also have mentors, right? I always reach out to a couple of people in places who are my mentors, even now when I have a question, like sometimes you cannot get everything. So I think honesty is the key word as for what you said as well, being authentic, honest, and and vulnerable at times. Uh, And the other one also, community is what you're saying is great too, because Sometimes people don't realize that you have to, people always think that I have to get to some place to join a community. No, you just have to think like, that's where I want to be. So start with that. Yeah. And, and, you know, exactly. And like, don't think like the power platform community is one of the most amazing places because everyone is new and everyone is like so except everyone has been new here at some point in space because this product what came out what like two it's been a bunch of different things but it really became like mainstream let's say like 2018 ish okay so it's not been that okay. that long there's nobody that's been doing the power platform for 30 years they may try to say something but like they yeah. haven't right And so everyone's kind of come in at like the same like humble place. So it's a group of people that just really, really want to help. And they really value like the more you that you are, the more accepting, right, that that people are of you. Like I always say I waited my whole life to feel like I belong like like I do in in this like dynamics power platform community so I think it's just a really special place for people to like come and like figure it all out you know yeah and also like power platform community is slightly different than like a developer community where because you need to have development code people from in power platform came from various aspects right from marketing from sales because the the power platform delivers to like different kinds of solutions that require people from different aspects of life so exactly well and to that point right i think that that's what makes it really cool is because you're going to have people from from all different backgrounds and all different walks of life and it's like somebody that's you know um literally this guy that used to i think just clean buses i can't believe i can't remember if it was buses or garbage trucks right but like that was his job and you know he learned power apps right and then it's like you're able to take like the knowledge and skill sets that you have right now that don't seem that significant or you don't give yourself credit for like what you know right now right like you throw some power apps on there and now you've got like a a mixed reality, you know what I mean, screen that's, you know, video gaming, the power washing of the trucks, and now you're like a superhero, right? And so it's cool because, I don't know, anytime you have, like, you increase, like, the diversity and you have a whole bunch of, like, different, like, types of people, which is which is what you have in the power platform community, right? I think that's probably what makes it so special is, like, you can relate with so many different types of people. It's not just like cookie cuttered out of like, this is, this is the only type of person that you have. And if you are not this make shape and model, you do not belong here. Right. That's like, just not the case. And so I think it's really cool. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing also you were talking about having complete knowledge, right? No one does, no one ever will because it's an evolving product. So the only thing I would say there, like you also mentioned was 
you need to stick to one thing and then after that you adapt with the knowledge you have as a base right you you should have the base knowledge of what power platform is and then you can build every other you can use every other tool within it to build right. whatever you need yeah exactly exactly kind of just know how they interact with each other but then like have the part that you like really love but then to your point then you can speak on how the part that you really love like works in other areas and after some time what you'll find out is because you love your side so much, then you're able to understand how it interacts with the other parts, and then you're like, oh, I know a lot more than I ever thought I knew, you know? Yeah, having that base will set you up. And the other thing also, this is my third time I'm listening this, so I want to stress it down in the podcast as well. This is also one reason I started podcast is what I'll learn. I'm learning this. Create and share has been a resonating factor between you and other creators and other people who are doing work to help community, right? Is create and share. Whatever you know, once you start teaching or sharing, you will keep that in your mind forever. And then it becomes a natural thing for you. So thank you on that as well. So, yeah, I think we all resonate with uh, same things. And that's something fascinating. I'm, I'm trying to find pieces from each podcast learning. Okay, everyone's saying this one thing is create and share. Yeah, create and share. It, it is. You know, I saw something that said you're a hundred you're a hundred LinkedIn posts away from being a subject matter expert in your industry. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so true. So to the point of like, you know, content and create. And I have a lot of people that are like, um, you know, I love your I love your LinkedIn marketing. I lo- I see you everywhere. Your marketing so fresh and so great. And I'm like if you don't think that I feel ridiculous, like posting selfies on, on LinkedIn every day, like you're ridiculous, right? But you have to put yourself out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't know what you're going to get, right? And and when it works, you lean into it. So same thing with the, the, the same thing with content creating, right? Like it's awkward for everyone, whether you're posting selfies, creating videos, creating blogs, like regardless, like it's uncomfortable and unnerving for everyone but like working messy action right like like something is better than nothing i'll always say like i've got terrible youtube videos from 2019 i just went to a show the other week and i realized on my banner i had a typo one nobody noticed the typo two i still had a banner right and i'm like you know what like is that what i want well of course not right but here's the thing like we move through action. You know what I'm not going to do again? I'm not, I'm never going to have a banner with a typo again, right? Like I'd rather learn on like early, early stakes and be like, ah, we'll put a bandaid on it and make fun of it. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, even for me, yeah, the other day I, when I was editing the video, I missed like a half a minute or one minute without audio. And out of that mistake, what came was I learned in YouTube, you can go back after posting and still yeah. remove a fun piece of it instead of deleting the whole thing. So oh. that was amazing. And I would never have learned if not for that mistake. And Exactly. It's about like failing forward, right? And I think that that's kind of been like my experience with the Power Platform and just journey even getting here, right? Like you are going to fail so many times in life, but you just have to get back up one more time, right? Just one more time yeah. than, than what you fail and you you are successful then, right? And like any, I don't ever like to look at them as like failures or like losses either. They are, they're, op, they're learning opportunities, right? Like that's yeah. the way that you look at something. If something is terrible, if you like screw up on something and you, you were just wrong, right? I mean, we're all human. And then I'm like, God, I feel really terrible about this. But hey, if it's a learning opportunity, that's what you need to dig into. Find the learning opportunity. So. Yeah. And the other thing also, I was listening, reading one of your things is you're always asked, how do you do what you're doing? Managing your time as a single mom, as a, as a leader for your company, as a public speaker, right? So how have you, I mean, it's, it feels hard, but when you have passion, it might be easy. So can you just emphasize on how this journey has been and how do you adapt to this? Gosh, uh, it, <laughs> it, it is, it's exhausting. But it's easy when you have passion about it. But I think at the same time, you have to know what your priorities are and like what your values are. I have um, Mary Rodriguez. She's uh, she's an amazing mentor. 
And she told me a long time ago, she's like, whenever you're doing this, she's like, you have to know exactly like what you stand for, like what, what your goals and what your purpose is, because there's going to be bad days and there's going to be so many things that like come at you and you have to, you have to know what you want and that's going to be your guiding force in making those decisions, right? So I say all of that because as I'm traveling, as I'm trying to figure all this out, right, it's always a balance between, between all of these different things. You know, I, um, it's, it is a lot to travel. My days are ridiculous. I'll just say like there, and, and, and I need to get some work-life balance. I will say that my typical day is from like 4 a.m. to about like 9 p.m. You know, so people are like, how do you sleep? Like, how do you get all of it done? Well, I, I don't sleep, right? I just basically work um, to try to, you know, get everything done. Like, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll work a few hours, and then I either go to the driving range and then take my son to school or the gym. You know what I mean? There's, like, some morning activity before I ever take my son to school. You know, so then by, like, 8.30, I'm like, okay, time time to work, you know, and then we work until whatever, 5 o'clock, and then I'm a mom for, like, an hour or two, and then I turn the computer back on, and, and we keep going, right? Because that's the schedule that it takes when I'm home, and then, and then the other time, like, I'm just gone, and so my son's, like, running on autopilot, um, but it's all worth it at the end of the day, right? Like, because then when I get home, like, we have our time together, he knows that it's going to be about him. And then I will say, while it has been really difficult, right, like being a single mom and like doing everything, I would say it's also been insanely rewarding. Um, and very, it's been a really good experience, I think, for my son, because he looks at me like I'm the most amazing person in the entire world. And like, that that's, that's a really great feeling, one, as a mom, to see somebody support you like that much. And two, like, he is the hardest working, like, little joker I know. He is, like, so – I always say he's more responsible than I am anyways, right? But um, I think it's been really good for him to see that things are not just handed to you in life, right? Like, there's there's no free lunch, especially in my house. Most of the time my son will make dinner for us, actually, right? Like, he's he's in this grind just as hard as I am. So, I don't know. We yeah. just we just make it work with yes. with a lot of love and grace, I guess. Yeah, I feel like what you said in the in the beginning as well, right? You have been working hard for a long time, but you found this opportunity, which is rewarding, not just monetarily, but that gives other opportunities to take care of your family better, to take care of your son in a different way. And also, I think you are a mentor for him in young ages when you see your parents like exceeding in other Mm -hmm. industries that they have not been before. It gives them that path to think nothing is a boundary for me. Like, and also, like you also follow by this go big or go home philosophy, right? (laughs) So I feel like that's what you are trying to do, and and hopefully this all is gonna resonate into uh, other things in future. But for now, you are helping and empowering other people is what I think. Well, exactly. You know, for me, I feel so grateful to be where I'm at, right? Like, it has been a hard journey. People are like, most people, you know, quit. Oh, you're so resilient. And I feel like, okay, well, yeah, maybe I am. But at the same time, I also feel like I've been so fortunate and so lucky to meet so many amazing people along the way and different people that, like, gave me a chance and, like, a half a dozen different breaks that I have found, you know what I mean, along the way and various opportunities And so for me, I've always been like, I just want to give that back, right? Like, I wouldn't be where I am if people didn't do that for me. So like my own, I just feel so like strongly that like my only option in life is to do like the same thing, right? To like be able to like give back and just help people because because life shouldn't be so hard. That's just how I feel like life doesn't have to be that hard. And if you can just go a little bit of help and like give a little bit back and a little bit of advice or a little bit of time. You know what I mean? You just never know how far that can, that can help somebody along the way. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking was who are your mentors? I know you mentioned one name, but do you have other mentors in the field or outside the field that are helping you uh, in your journey so far? Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I've got Mary Rodriguez. She's, she's been a mentor of mine. Um, Donna Sakar was somebody as well. 
you know, that these were like first people that were like really big, like icons. And I'm like, man, I want to be like them when I grow up. And now it's kind of amazing because now I feel like they're my like actual friends. So that's, that's crazy. But then like my, one of my best friends, her name is Kristen Hossman. This girl is like my rider's eye. And anyone that knows me knows Kristen. I call, I call her mom. Um, but she's just such a dear friend, like, and she runs her own business too. Right. And so, um, you know, we really lean into each other. Like we'll call each other like every morning, you know, basically. And it's like making sure like, what do you, what are you doing during the day? Or if I don't know what to do, or if I'm struggling on something, or if I'm having a crap day, she's going to make sure that like, I'm doing what I need to do. Right. Or she's going to provide that like encouragement. And I've seen her be really successful in her business. And you know what? She's at my same, like she's been in business longer than I have. But when I look at her, I see that it's reachable. And and that's kind of the same thing I like to be for other people as well. Right. So she's been a really big support to me. Um, Also, one of my friends, Shannon Mullins, she helped me get started. And, um, and so she's always been, you know, really big mentor to me as well. And then let's see here, my like a non industry person would be my uncle in the last year, he's, uh, he's been a really good mentor to me as well. It's kind of cool to see he's, um, he was in a different business world, you know, and, and so he provides all this like insight to me from like these different perspectives. So I just kind of like to take all these different people and kind of wrap them all in and, and see what we got. So that's great. I, and also the other side of your things that we see is looks like you're an avid golfer. You like to golf and then you're a pro golfer known in the community. So I would, what are your other hobbies for your stress management or relaxing? You said you go to driving range in the morning, but any other hobbies you have? Between, no, no, you know, I spend a lot, I spend a lot of time in the golf course. That's, that's, it makes me feel like I have a life outside of work, you know, um, but no, I live here in Florida. And so for me, I love to golf. It's just kind of a fun activity. It keeps me outside. I can play alone if I need to. But then what I also love is that my son and I play a lot of golf together. So, you know, between, between running my own company, like raising a kid on my own and like spending time with him, you know, there's, there's not much time for anything else if I'm being really honest, you know. He plays football as well. So I spent um I spent a lot of time carting him around the golf course, you know, back and forth between the football field and the golf course. Um, but I I wouldn't change it either. So that's that's basically it. I'm like so boring. <laughs> No, no, it's not boring. I think you're looking for the future and you're you're guiding him and also building that bond because you never know, right? Kids always go off before you know they're gone. Exactly. That's what I tell him. I got like three years left with him, right? And so, and like as the time goes on, he wants to have less and less time with me anyways. So I just take in all the time that he'll have me and then in like the extra three hours of spare time that I may have in a week. You know what? I usually just go to bed early because I'm exhausted from everything else I've done. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I really appreciate your time today. I know in your busy okay. schedule, it's great to have you. And and I also feel like when we spoke in the first time as well, my whole thing was, this is going to be some story about someone who didn't have any up any view towards power platform or even tech industry, right? So suddenly you moved into this tech industry and then something. So let's just get back to that in a bit and see about any lessons, what lessons from your time in non-tech industry that you brought into the tech space. Uh, You were in cosmetic and other steel manufacturing, right, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's tons, I would say there are tons of things that I've been able to use from my previous experiences that have helped me be, you know, successful in in the tech industry. One of them um, being, so I used to run, I used to run a uh, construction company for somebody who made like smart tape, uh, smart, uh, smart rows, right? We lay like the Cat5 cables down. And then we also we're like an electrical contracting company. And when I walked into this organization, they were like, I don't know, six months behind on taxes. And it was like such a mess. And I I was so 
overwhelmed. I don't know what I was doing, if I'm being honest, right? Or I, well, I did, but it was just very, very, very overwhelming. And I remember my boss at the time, because he, um, he had another job, so he had me running both of these companies for him. He was like, look, Mary, I'm never going to be mad at you for making the wrong decision. Never going to be mad at you for making a mistake and making the wrong decision. I don't care how bad you mess up. I'm not going to be mad about that. I'm going to be mad if you don't make a decision. If you just sit here and don't do anything, that's when I'm going to be mad. And so that has been such an integral part, right, of like what I've taken through the rest of my life. Or, or I, think, I think that's where perseverance comes in as well, right? So whenever I'm testing flows or something's not working and this approach isn't working and there's no documentation on it, right? I'm like, all right, let's, let's try this. Let's try this, right? Because the worst thing I could do is not make a decision, not try something. Right. So it kind of takes that that fear of failing out of things. Right. Like he gave me that confidence. I knew I wasn't going to be in trouble. And so then I got really good at being confident in the decisions. You know what I mean? That I'm going to to make, which is great when you're a business owner. Right. You need to be able to make decisions on the fly sometimes. Um, so that that was one. And then it's funny, too, because I did. <laughs> I was a bartender. I did bartending. I was in cosmetics and I also did, um, I also did promotional modeling and like my earlier days, putting myself through school. And so all of that rolled into making me a good public speaker and good at, I think like sales, right. And really being able to like market myself and like being able to just go up to random people and be like, okay, how am I going to have a conversation with this person, right? How are we going to have a meaningful conversation in a short amount of time? How are you going to, to engage with them, right? Whether it be at a presentation or like in an expo hall. Um, so I think, you know what I mean? These soft skills, this is what I always like try to encourage people that are moving into tech, right? They're like, oh, I've only been, you know, in, in restaurants. I've only been a bartender. I've only been a server. And I'm like, great. Take that personality and run with it because you're going to have an easier time talking with somebody than somebody that, you know, spent their whole life most likely in computer school. Right. And, and, and so. So, again, we're just taking like the skill sets that we have other places and, and tying them into to tech. So, yeah. yeah. Um, on the other side, like you said, soft skills and other things. Right. One of the key things for me was. Uh, like my my wife now, right? She was not in tech before. She was a manager for Starbucks and other things. She was in management positions in different other places, but she moved into project management and other things. And she did learn a lot of skills, even corporate at corporate level. Starbucks is a different corporate level. Like they teach a lot of trainings. One of the things for her as well, for her from her, what I learned is when she does interviews, you never hesitate about your bar experience, never hesitate about your other experience. You take yeah. them as a positive thing. And in the interview, even if you're new in the tech, just keep saying that I was doing, even in bar, I was the most talkative person. I was the one who could understand what the needs yeah. are. I could understand, I've done CPR training. It shows your skills and adaptability to situations and right. never hesitate about other experiences, even if you're starting new. That's something I would add. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, when I got started in, in tech, right? So at the time I, I had my, well, first I started and I got my associate's degree and I realized that that wasn't going to be enough in life. And so then I finished my bachelor's degree and then I realized that that still probably wasn't going to be quite enough for what I really wanted my goals were. So then I went in to get my master's actually for ERP management because I had um, I had somebody because I was actually thinking about getting my CPA license. Right. And somebody was like I had a boss at the time. He was like, that's a lot of personality to waste behind the desk. He was like, I think you're missing your calling at something in life. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of always like thought about that. And then um, when I when I got into so the day that I had my interview for for my tech job, I it was a lunch interview and I started off the interview, um, never met the guy. But I was like, you're going to need to know by the end of this interview if you're going to hire me or not, because I have somebody else that wants to give me a job. But I told them I was going to come to this interview. So he was like, OK, yeah. right. So I actually had no idea like what I was doing, but I think honestly in that first statement to him, right, like that confidence and just like being able to sit down and have this conversation with him, he was like, 
you know, what he decided, he was like, you can't teach a personality like that. He was like, with tech, you can teach the clicks, right? Like, that's the easy part. It's being able to take that industry experience. It's being able to take and dive into being an end user, whether it's a server, whether it's a line weather worker, whether it's a, a dishwasher, a, a bus washer, right? Any of those people, they can take their that experience and and take and dive into that where somebody that's just been plugging away at computers is just you know what I mean so just being able to resonate that in for them no that's good I think one of the key things as part of the interviews as well later I want to get into is we'll bring back you and others as well but I think now we are becoming interviewers right I'm an interviewer now I was an interviewer for a long time one of the key things I'm learning is I'm looking for those things too and slowly understanding I am hiring the person who can do the job like with his personality more than the technical issues because technically you could solve something by asking help or something but if you don't have that attitude or if if you don't have that mental strength to comprehend the the questions comprehend the situation and adapt right. to it then your technical skills would not come into place because you are going downhill with your personality so uh, that's something right. great too. Maybe on that, I would ask you something too. Like if someone's starting new, I think you had been there. What advice do you give for preparation towards their first or second interview in tech space? Uh, and what do you think they should concentrate on before or after the interview? Mm. Um, so going into going into the interview, the most important thing that you can have is experiences or your use cases, right? Where you've yeah. been part of a project, projects that you've been on, anything that you've built, right? If we're talking from the power platform scenario, be able to talk on what you built. You know yeah. what I mean? Have that stuff ready. If, if you've not done anything, then you, you need to make sure that you're applying for the right job, right? But basically, if you don't have, even if you're applying for a customer service role, right? Where it's not like a technical role, great. Have, have some use cases. Well, you're the best person for like that gotcha. part or that you have like experience, you know what I mean, in there. Um, that's what I would say going into it. And then again, be honest in your, you know, scenario. If they ask you a question and you don't know, say that you don't know and try to find something that's most similar to it and be like, ah, it's not quite like this, but being able to tra- like be honest and pivot. Yeah. Again, is a consulting, you know what I mean, scenario. So just being able to do that is going to be way more impressive than whatever the right answer may have been, you know. Um, and then afterwards, I guess a follow up would be um, do do the good old traditional, you know, please and thank you. Thank you. Yes. You know, find them at find them on LinkedIn. Send send a nice message on LinkedIn. My friend the other day, she was. She was sharing with me. She said that she had like four interviews, right? And only one of them followed up with like a thank you. You know what I mean? And, and not that it needs to be like that, but I mean, here's the thing. Do you want to guess who stood out between those four candidates, right? So, you know, whether it's a thank you or just, you know, this information was like really meaningful, like those types of things. Um, and then always have a question for the interview mm-hmm. as well, like, Go to their website, do do something. But when they ask you, do you have any questions? Yeah. Do not just sit there and be like, no, I have no questions. Because then you're just like a fish, right? You're just like flopping on the ground. Like you don't have anything to like add to it. Like come back at them with something. So. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, yeah, preparation wise, one of the other things is if you're very new, one of the key things you could do is you don't might not have a real experience, but like she like you mentioned, if you start getting into creating content or being part of the community, you in yeah. when they ask you a question, you could say, I've done honesty is the first thing. You don't have a real experience, you just got certified and trained, but I have yeah. done this, I've shared a content on that scenario, this is how I would do. Uh, yeah. or this is what I've learned from the community members. If you say that, it adds value that, okay, though you don't know, but you know the how to do it later on. So I think well, that's... Well, exactly, really too. And kind of anyone, to your point, that's like wanting to like get in or wondering how to like make some movements there, too, um, get certified, get your certifications, put them online, get as many certifications. I understand that there is a time 
and financial costs to you as an individual doing that, like $165, usually about that. Yeah. However, fun facts, guess what? Partners need to have certifications, need to have their employees have certain certifications so that they can keep their certifications. What does that mean? That yeah. means that all of our new people coming in, you are more valuable to your employers or potential employers if you have certifications. So as you're trying to help yourself and empower yourself, if you're like, is this $165 worth it? Yes, I promise you that it is because I promise you that there's probably $165 somewhere in this month that you're going to spend on like Burger King, Starbucks, oh, something else, yeah, yeah. right? Like find find that money, money if you're really serious about it. Find the money to make it happen because you will make so much more. So much more. What yeah, you, you can mean? recover that money way faster than you think, right? And exactly. and like you mentioned, the partner side, that's also interesting. I made a video on like why we need certifications. One of the key things is if you at least get the base certification, like MB300 for Power Platform, whatever the base one is, once you join the company, then you expedite yourself and get all the other ones because the company pays for it, right? So exactly. A lot yeah. of the times I've noticed people get the first one and then they kind of stay there because they're like, I don't want to do anything else. I'm happy with the job. But they're not looking at the futures aspect. like if, Because when someone's paying for free, utilize it in a way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know... It, exactly right. And the certifications, one, they're good. They're good because, you know, they'll help you get the jobs. But two, um, if you go through and you get all of your fundamentals, you you're going to be sharp. Yeah. You're going to you're going to you're going to know the talk. Right. You're going to know the lingo. You're going to have the confidence because you're going to be able to speak the right language if you go through with them. Right. And even if you don't want to pay them, maybe you're like, OK, cool. I don't want to pay them. I'm not going to get the certifications. Cool. If you take the time, right, if you're like, how do I get better? What do I do? Even maybe preparing for like those jobs or something. Again, that learn documentation is so powerful. And those courses like are really, really good in my opinion. Right. So, again, if nothing else, you'll you'll know the right concepts and language and, and feel confident in what you're doing. Yeah, and like I also like that uh, training configuration aspect, right? You know how to configure because most of the times if you're learning through a video or a blog, you don't know the the base layer of how it even can happen, right? So once you go yeah. through your base knowledge, you'll get there. Uh, the other thing I think you mentioned about thank you and as well, but I also say, feel like once you say thank you, you build a connection there already. You never know when that connection will play with you. Forget the job today. You, you might interview you three years down the line or, you know, that's also a good thing for you to have and build that connection. So the before when I was before I went into tech, right? So like I wasn't bluffing when I told the guy that I had another job like lined up. I really did. Um, and ironically enough, to your point, two years prior, I had went on this job interview to work at the CPA firm. They ended up going with somebody else. Yeah. Two years later, two years later, the guy called me and he was like, I know. But again, I did the follow up. Right. I really, really wanted the job. I ended up like not getting it. But I did the follow up. I said the thank you. I did all the good things. Right. Um, and he told me that for two years, he kicked himself in the butt for not hiring me. And he knew that he made a mistake. And he was like, I'm getting ready to retire. But I would like for you to like take over like my firm. Like, will you will you come now? Will you come work for me? And that's when I told him, I was like, I've got another job interview tomorrow that I have to take. And that's when I went into tech. But but to your point, right, like people will remember you. People will come back years later if you do the right things in your follow up, even if you don't get the job at the time. Yeah. And usually interviews are not just one person. You'll gel with one. You might not gel with the other. And and also not anyone can gauge your capabilities within half an hour or an hour. So don't get yeah. disappointed too. just keep on thriving through that process. And honestly, to kind of randomly, I know we're like on interview tips and tricks right now, but um, I interviewed, I would go on interviews every six months, just, I, would, I say quote unquote for fun, right? But here's one thing that I always knew is because um, interviews are very nerve wracking, right? They, they can be very, you know, kind of sweaty, all that good stuff, right? So the only way that you get good at something is like practice, right? So I used to interview for jobs that I didn't necessarily care about or like want, but I would put my 
I kind of sound so crazy now, but I would give my like resume still to like recruiters and they'd like line me up for like, you know what I mean, jobs. And I would just do the interview and, t- and then like ask for ridiculous amounts of money that I knew I wasn't going to get. But it just got me more comfortable at that. Probably, probably, I didn't realize what I did, but I didn't, right? Because my mm. thing was, I didn't want to, when it came down to a time when there was a job that I absolutely wanted, and I did not want to fail. I wanted to be able to nail that interview and not be like the second interview I ever had right so I would just like do these interviews for for fun basically so then I think lo and behold when it came down to it and I was like okay well you're gonna have to hire me at the end of lunch right and I was just so confident in it that I don't think you knew what to do so moral of the story take practice interviews as well like even if you're not in the position for hiring I hope that you love where you're working but maybe one day that you won't or maybe something will happen. So, like, start practicing now so it's not, like, the first the first conversation, you know? Yeah. No, I think piggyback on you, I was thinking the same. One of the key things I do after every interview, now I'm interviewing for, like, leadership positions. But mm-hmm. the thing is, when you go to this other level, next level, or even when you're beginning, one of the key things you don't know is there is no template for what questions are someone going to ask. So the only template is you join the interview, you take the interview, and then you learn, okay, these are the questions I need to be prepared for the next interview. Before you know, if you take three, four interviews, the fourth interview will be every question one person asks from each company or something, and then you already have prepared yourself, you have notes on what they are. So I, I, I feel like that's also a great tool in terms of preparing for interviews is just jump into them. If you really like a job, you can do as much preparation as you want, but you never know what they're asking. So Exactly, exactly. And the other key tip I will add in later video as well, but as we're speaking, I realized was, one of the key things I realized is people don't use um, recruiting agents properly. I think it's recruiter's job to tell you what they're interested in. It's not the job description. People sometimes forget to tell you, So, no, thank you for your time. I was asking about your future aspirations, uh, but we'll meet again maybe. Uh, But for now, thank you so much. And would you like to say anything to end the podcast in a way? No, thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure being here. And if anyone, you know, wants to get in touch with me, you can always find me on um, LinkedIn under Mary Myers. And can't wait to connect with everyone. Yeah, thank you. And I'll put all the links for her and all her website in the below. So thank you so much, Mary. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye.